and welcome to episode 21 and i'm here with marlo ray aloha and i forgot my whiteboard <laughs> can't forget about that whiteboard <laughs> that adhd you know i do too God damn, man, you got a whole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he said, white boy, I ain't know it look like this, all right? Well, now, welcome to episode 21, Tristan Shop Talk. And today I have Marlo Ray. Howdy. From, which earlier I had to learn the name, which was not. Suo. Suo. Yeah, not Suo. Which is downtown. So and the address for address. downtown, for that location that you uh, do your open mic at, what's the location? Oh, 314 Main Street. 341 Main Street. 314 yeah. Main Street. 314 yeah. Main Street. Right. And then it's downtown, north, um, downtown North Main, like of uh, downtown Houston. So uh, that's uh, how I met you. Um, I think because ever since I got started back into going up. I thought we met, at the, I thought we met before at the secret group. Yeah, we actually, yeah, we met at Back of the Bus. Yeah. Yeah, we did meet at Back of the Bus. Um, yeah, just making sure everything's working good there. Everything's <laughs> recording, it's recording. Yeah, so just making sure. <laughs> so, yeah, so, no, nah, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. I know we, uh, we definitely uh, cheers uh, for uh, coming by. Oh, yeah. I usually just cheers for the beginning <laughs> of the conversation. Kind of maybe start something from that. Uh, so... Definitely. That was good. So thank you for coming. Uh, we tried to plan this a few weeks back, and I, I know I had mentioned it to you before. Now I'm rolling. Um, you're also welcoming the uh, new little set that I have going on. Um, this is a step up from before, because before I had the desk, and then it was kind of like a whole little Joe mm -hmm. Rogan looking, but whatever. <laughs> so now, yeah, now I feel a little more comfortable because now it's, a little bit more, I feel more welcoming, you know, just yeah. come in, hang out, talk. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I know I had met you at Back of the Bus because at Back of the Bus, I had did, I had kind of went in there, did a set, and I hadn't been there in a while because that's why I was mentioning, um, I believe it was Josh and the other gentleman that was doing the Kenji, Kenji and they were doing the uh, open mic, and then of course you took it over. Yeah. And then now you're in charge of that. Mm -hmm. So how did that even happen? So I mean, did, did did were you already you were already doing your secret group there? You had already been to, doing to get to do the back of the bus. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I know just like how how you got to where you're at now, which is now you're doing the open mic night on Thursday, back of the bus. Oh well, um, you know, Joe. Joe. Okay. Yeah. He um, um Josh was planning on leaving and going to New York, uh, and he was looking for somebody to replace him. Right. And Joe Navarro vouched for me. Hey, get Josh and everything. Like, I mean, get Marlo, yada, yada, yada. And that's pretty much it as is, simple as that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nice. Because at the time they were looking, because Josh and all of them were going to move on to do other things as yeah, well, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And then you fell in. So, and then how long has that been going on now? How many years now? In the back of the bus. I've been doing that for like, what, damn, three years. That's a long time. Well, well, no, well, you know, time flies. Yeah, time does fly, bro. but I'm, th I'm thankful for it too, man, because. It's because of the back of the bus. It helped me prepare for Natsuo. Right. And the host shows there and everything like that. So I'm thankful, man. Back of the bus is a good now, thing. Now, now, explain this to me. I always get confused because I know sometimes they, they do it usually in the box, right? Mm -hmm. Where they have the stage and then it says the box. Yeah. And then, but then every now and then they switch it over to the inside of the bigger area, I guess, the bigger auditorium area. Yeah. Usually they use the box for show, for uh, not shows, but for on the weekends. Uh huh. Uh, and cause you know, on the weekends they have emo nights and Y2K nights and everything. And sometimes they have parties in a big showroom Yeah, and they still want to do comedy. So, you know, uh, cause I know you probably get both, you get best of both worlds as in attracting people inside there. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah cause yeah, yeah. you know, they're, Oh shit. Then I'll go hear some comedy and then I'll come out and I'll do some karaoke. Sometimes or, you get the emo creeps to yeah. come in <laughs> and listen to jokes. It's cool. Cause, cause I don't know back in the day. See, I had I had got Andrew Youngblood was actually a uh, a guy that I had met because I used to do security at Royal Oak off of Westheimer. He's the owner. Yeah, but but I I, I it was set up because down there where Warehouse Live was at, mm -hmm. he was managing that, 
And then at the time he had warehouse live open mic, but it was like that little, it was like a little smaller area right next to where actually warehouse life is now. Oh. And then they had that. But then of course, I don't know what there, but during the whole transition, that's when I guess he went on. Or I don't, I don't know, but I guess that's when they went ahead and that's when they, I, I believe they developed secret group oh. because then that's when I, you know, I, I found out then I went back. And then that's when I ran to Andrew Youngblood. And then oh, I was yeah. like, oh, wow. I was like, yeah, yes. now he's running the show. Or he's part of, of course, a group of owners, I, I'm guessing, too. You uh, know? I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> that's before my career. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anything. I am. But I see, that, that, that's, and then, you know, I mean, that's, that's why I, I kind of, like, I feel drawn there. Because it's just welcoming, you know. I mean, of course, if you know where to go, who, how to sign <laughs> up, whatever, you know. And then, boom, you know. Oh, yeah. I love, no, Secret Group is probably... Uh, well, it used to be my favorite venue before Nashville came. <laughs> yeah. But Secret Group is that place. It's all I'm always it's always gonna have a special place in my heart. That's where I it's not where I started comedy, but that's where I developed myself. Right. You know what I mean? So I yeah, I love the Secret Group. Yeah. No, no, no. Because I mean, like I said, I always liked that that room like right behind, like just that just that box, the box where it says the box. Yeah, because it's, it's, cool it's, it's room. very intimate. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, yeah, it's cool, and then it kind of gives you that theater, act, you know, the theater experience, you know. Mm-hmm. So then that theater experience is just, you know, um, you're there, the crowd, you know. But but the only thing I think about it is just like you catch a lot of people from the baseball game. You catch everybody in that truck. You're, people just wander all around that area. Yeah. So when they wander around, they just go in that area. And then that was another question. Isn't that another thing that gets drawn in there? Is like a lot of like what Astros homeless? games? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, homeless is there in the corner, but but like a lot of Astros games. Yeah. Like after Astros games, those guys, those people just, and especially of course if the Astros win, they just go all through the Edu area right there, and mm-hmm. of course that's yeah. one of their stops. That they and it's stop funny by. when they when they win, they show up, or when they lose, they still you know yeah I mean? yeah yeah they're like fuck it they like, yeah. they might as well just Astros them. when we gotta celebrate Astros yeah. lost man we gotta fucking go celebrate <laughs> yeah yeah. We gotta go drink it. This L off our chest. And then, and then, uh, so yeah, back bus is Thursday nights. Uh, not Su. Not Suo. Not you keep Suo. butchering it. You keep, yeah, I, 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 oh, it's, uh, it's it, not that hard. No, no, <laughs> it's, it's like one of those things, like when I think and about it, you've been too to China, much, haven't you? Yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but like, yeah, yeah, but when I, when I think about saying something, it's just like I overthink it, and then it's just weird. I just miss it. Mm. It's like I still trip and fall. It's like weird. Like, even though I know it's there, I'm just, I'm just no, okay, just roll right over, but not. Physically, but you know, not literally. Suo Houston spelled backwards. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, well, I, I had always known that um, it was right there next to Dean's. Dean's. Yeah. And then, yeah, so I remember back in the day, it was something else, and then I guess they. But I don't know. I think it's an awesome bar. That's no, it's that, Yeah, it's, bar. A, it's a nice, it's a nice little cool spot. Because and then, like you know, as you go up to the third floor, you know, you have this little. Staircase, yeah, kinda, man. It's not a bar like that in Houston, man. Surprisingly, yeah. uh, when I went to Austin, it kind of reminded me of the bars out there. There was so many places that had like hidden rooms and shit like yeah. that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, but and and see, that's that's the thing that that's what I think I was talking with you earlier about was like how Houston is more. Um, I think Houston is definitely a different d- demographic than than Austin because it's just Austin is just so weird. <laughs> yeah it is I, isn't that their I mean, slogan keep Austin weird word alright well but it used to be weirder than that though it used to, like now it's like I said like all these tech companies have come in um, but overall like the scene used to be more I, I feel it used to be more um, music way more music than it is now but uh, then I know you said you saw a bunch of music out there but but it is comedy saturated it, 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 it all has to do with Joe Rogan Joe Rogan put his comedy club out there so comics from LA are moving down here. You got big timers, you know, residing in down in Austin. So yeah, yeah, yeah. When you t- when you told me that, I was like, uh, but the more I think about, it, I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, because yeah, th- there wasn't a big juggernaut like Joe Rogan or you know to. But but it's like how you say it. it's like how can I put it? It it's just a different scene than here. Like here, Houston. But I'm not even down in Houston scene. What I'm saying is Houston's just different in a whole different way. Austin's always just been Austin. And then Austin's been kind of just where it's just more close knit. And I think Houston's always been just more widespread. Yeah. More more, more of a yeah, just way but, more diverse. But, but it, it makes sense. Houston is 
what the fourth biggest state? I mean, I, state <coughs> in the country. Me, I still feel we're still like the third largest, if not the second. I mean, we, I mean, because you're thinking of just Houston, but then you also got to think of like all these other little areas around Houston. Like we're centered. I call, it, but when I say Houston, I'm including like Katy and all. I, 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 I see that as part of Houston. Yeah, yeah, right, right, you know right. I mean? Yeah, but I mean, because it's like, I mean, obviously New York, you got L.A., but then L.A. and New York, they're kind of spread out too, but they're all bunched up together, and then, yeah, I, yeah, I feel we're definitely in that realm. We're we're in that big realm. Even over Dallas, even over Dallas and Fort yeah. Worth. Okay, of course, yeah. Like yeah. I said, Houston is the biggest city, is the fourth biggest city in the country. But see, I also feel though too though it's also a very small world though. You know what I'm saying? I do not. Like, say if you go to the same spots, or you say you go to the same deals or whatever. Of course, like I said, like the baseball baseball game brings usually different people out. And the baseball game brings people there, and then people venture out to the downtown, mm-hmm. and they go to different spots mm-hmm. throughout the week, depending on whatever day is going on. So as I'm saying, it's almost like you just get people that are just like, like the comedy scene is is not small, but I'm saying like it's 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 people that go do their comedy, but then you have like a different like like a I'm still like not, a re- I'm still like, not following what you're saying. I'm what I'm saying is like 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 when people come into the to visit, it's not gonna. It's, sometimes it's the same people that are gonna be coming over and or around to visit and see the comedians. But I'm still saying like sometimes you still get like a different, I guess a different crowd. I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you're if you're saying it, you know, you have your regulars. Right, right, right yeah. Of course, right, I guess I'm messing up that. And yeah. then you have, and then, and then also. With your records included, you have people who never even been a secret group. Right. Or never even seen comedy. Come, Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, then they might not come back next week, but they'll come back three weeks. Yeah, three weeks And then weeks they'll bring some people. Or something. No. And then, then maybe the other people that didn't go the week before, they'll go, oh, we'll go this week. And then that's what I'm saying. Like, okay. It's always just like rotating, you know, like people mm. who come through and they know about secret group or they know about downtown, you know. So, then they just flip it up. And then, of course, I know there's Axelrad. There's all these other open mics as well um they have host shows and then now i'm seeing like a i've always seen a lot of them down in clear lake and off of 45 league city some of those spots over there and i think that's cool i mean it just kind of keeps it going but the only thing out there like i said those people that live close to there are gonna be usually the ones that are gonna attend those shows you know that's why i like about downtown or even downtown houston in general is because you got people coming from outside in that's what i guess i was getting at was just saying like you have just different people from outside of Houston coming in, you know, to downtown. And then, of course, like you said, they just want to go see something that secret group or they've never been there. So they're like, oh, shit, I never knew about this place. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Like, wow, you know. And no, then, no, yeah. And then, you know, and then they catch some good comics and then they want to come back again, you know. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, 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 I like that about like, this Houston. This shit sucks. I'm never coming back. What, what's that? So, or they see terrible comics like, oh, this shit sucks. I'm never well, I've seen some fucked up shit there, too, though. I've seen, like, when Josh and them were, were uh, hosting, some dude went in there and said the N-word. You know, It was you. me. I said it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he went in there and just, like, and then, like, the guy was like, well, I mean, this is this is a... Comedy, right? I mean, you can say whatever. It's like, yeah, I don't know about that one, dog. On like, you, stage, you yeah, dumb bro. One. Like, oh, he, wait, wait, wait. He was on stage when he said that. Yeah, he was on stage. Oh. He did it on purpose. Well, you know, just I mean, to, just I mean you like, can say whatever. Yeah, but he, but he was just like, there was no material before or even after. He just like, no, said yeah, it. no. He just went up there and said, yeah. no, yeah, no. That right there was fucking. That right there. It's was, like I think he says something, and then he goes, yeah, and then he just like says it. I'm like. Eh, you can't really do that. You can't really like. I, I mean, you can say whatever the fuck you want to say, but then I'm just saying like, like the whole key here no, is to just, like get calm. Yeah. Do somebody laughing, not just yeah, to yeah. come and say, "Yo, I said it." Like, but and I, I said it on the microphone. It's like okay. I support freedom of speech. I'm like, go up there and say whatever it is you want, but there will be consequences. That's that's all I'm saying. If you if you're a white person or anyone who's not African American, you go up there and say the N word, you're, you're gonna piss someone off. Right. It's just, you know. And then, then you know, but, but I'm, I'm say- not. Te- I'm not. I, I don't think you should say it. But right. I, I will never tell you, hey man. You know, don't go up there and say that. Like, I'm, I'll be like, try it out. <laughs> yeah, and, see what and then see that's what another thing. Like, like, thank God, like none of those guys like did anything. You know, I don't know if you know, know the comic is a comedian. Uh, he's been seen from his name Jackson, Namie. He's like a little, little teen white 
I can't even describe. He was like a school shooter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I uh, funny that. dude, but he has a funny N word bit. He's a white dude. He has a funny N word bit talking about um uh sometimes you gotta say the N word. It's like touching a hot stove. You gotta touch it once to know you're not gonna touch it. Oh, that was just <laughs> hey, that's, that's a good that's a good punchline, but but that's but, that's just funny. Yeah, yeah. I just thought about it. <laughs> it really but 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 you said he's a white guy saying that joke? Yeah, he doesn't say nigga. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. He's just mm-hmm. be like, well, sometimes you got to say the N-word. It's like touching a hot stove. You got to touch it once <laughs> so you know not to do it again. I'm like, all right. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, that that was like some shit I've seen there, you know, from just having different people come through there because they, they see it. They're like, oh, shit, it's open mic tonight. Let me just see. Let me see what I can get away with. Let me go in there and say some shit and walk out. Um, And then, uh, so that, that's why another thing I was talking about was the comparison of, I guess, Houston versus Austin. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, well, actually, you know what? Let me, let me step back. Let me step back. So you, you uh, originally had told me that you had your family that came from Kansas? My family is originally from Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I was raised here. Right. Houston. Born and raised here in Houston. Wow. And then, and then you went to North Shore. North Shore. Yeah. Galena Park. And then. Terrible school. So is there something that like happened like when you were younger and you're like, yeah, I want to do that shit. Like I want to make people laugh. Um, oh, fuck or was, yeah. it, was, it was it, was it, was it, was it like how young, do you remember how young uh, you were? How, like when yeah. You, fourth grade lunch. Fourth grade lunch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Was it like a specific thing or was it just, no, it was just you know, I, 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 I was always a shy kid. Yeah. And I knew how to make people laugh before I knew how to actually communicate thoughts and feelings and shit like that. Yeah. So I'm over here sitting by myself during lunch. I don't know what happened. I just know I did something that caused everybody at the table to laugh. So, okay, like they're laughing. I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'm just so I just kept doing what people were laughing at. I'm like, all right. The next day, uh, having lunch again, uh, the cool kids, they were just like, yo, oh, you funny. Come sit next to us. Yeah, yeah, come, come sit next to us. Yeah, come, you're, you're hilarious. Like it was, bro, I'm like, this, this is how you make friends? This is easy. And that's that right there kind of solidified. I want I want to be the funny guy in a room. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No, I can see that. <laughs> so fourth grade, and then I mean, was it like also a comedian you you had saw when you were younger? Maybe somebody else had showed you comedians, and then you're like, oh shit! Like do they actually get paid for doing that shit? Say what? <laughs> Say, I'm sorry. like a comedian you saw when you were younger. You're like, oh damn! Like they get paid for doing nah, this? I, actually, or they're I didn't, famous doing this. I didn't know what comedy was until I hit like. Hmm. I didn't really know what comedy was until like high school. High school. You know what I mean? Cause did, I, did you ever do any comedy or anything? I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. Did you ever do like drama, like in middle school or anything like that? Or did you ever get on a stage, hold a mic? Did you ever like act in front of family, like look at me, and then do something? Or <laughs> nope, I did karaoke. That's it. <laughs> karaoke. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but I just didn't know. I didn't know what stand up was until like after high school. I did because. I grew up on Eddie Murphy. I grew up on all those Eddie Murphy and yada, yada, yada. But I didn't know Eddie Murphy became Eddie Murphy through comedy. I thought he was just an actor. Ah, you know what I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so. But see, also, like we said earlier, the age difference The age difference. You so you know Eddie Murphy when he yeah, was, like, doing yeah. comedy, yeah. SNL and all that stuff. Yeah, yes. see, see, me was, like, I mean, dude, I could probably fuck you up, man. Benny Hill was, like, another one. Carol Burnett. Uh, but these were all, like. Like I said, kind of like the same shit that that's gone. Like variety shows, like Carol Burnett. That was like this woman that like I was in the mid. I was like five or six and would come on. And you know, of course, you got the fucking dial on the on the TV. <laughs> you know, did 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 did, and then like boom, Carol Burnett. And then it was like on a stage. And then I I knew at a young kid, like as a young kid, like they're trying to be funny and they're on a stage. And then they come out and talk to people. And then this is like on TV. I was like, and this is kind of funny. You know, and, and there was like, you know, a few guys on there that were real funny. And then, of course, Carol Burnett would come out. And then every now and then, of course, she would bring Lucille Ball on. But then I can go back in the day where I watched I Love Lucy and shit like that, where I, <laughs> I knew shit like that was like actually being filmed. Yeah, yeah. And then on a stage, on a set, you know, kind of, you know, I mean, I feel... That can all like all back then, like to me, that just seemed so like, like, I know, like yeah. so narrow minded in a way, like because it was so you know. And it's funny you say. It's funny you say. I love when it comes to sitcoms. You know, it was a big influence on me. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. 
Mm -hmm. Fresh Prince of Bel was a huge influence on me because I thought Will Smith was so fucking hilarious mm -hmm. in that show. And I always, I, I remember as as a kid, I was always envisioned my scenarios like a sitcom. Right. You know what I mean? So whenever when someone talks, I I can just picture a laugh track and me doing a joke and people laughing. It, it, you know, I had a weird just. Funny, yeah. I mean, even shit. We can even go back to uh, Family Matters. Steve Urkel, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, even that dude, that dude there. I mean, he had a character. I don't know, but like I said, with me, you can even go to P.B. Herman, man, Paul Rubens. You know, like I said, I just thought that was him, P.B. Herman. Mm -hmm. And then later on, as I got older, I started noticing him in other movies, and then I was like, oh shit, he's an actor. Mm -hmm. But then he started off as a comedian. And then coming to find out, he developed that character because he, uh, the character, he apparently couldn't remember lines. <laughs> so the only thing he could go do is just wear like a little funny suit with a bow tie and then go up and start mm. making jokes. So uh, like I said, I, I know what you're saying. Like it's just, yeah, it's just uh, very uh, different aspects of, of understanding comedy. I mean, even, even I can even go to um, back in the day was, Saturday Night Live, SNL, you know, and then not, not knowing that SNL was so picky and choosy, you know, because I always remember there was always just different people. And then sometimes there would be different comedians coming in. And a lot of them, they picked from comedy or comedians from the yeah. from the stand-ups that were there in New York. And they would pick all these people that would do skits. And once you get on, you you made it, I guess. And then after that point, I guess you had to continue writing or starring in movies, you know. Man, SNL... Seems like such a hassle. I don't, I couldn't be on it. Just from the the work ethic that's provided, I'm too lazy. I want to like write when I want to write. I don't want to be told, okay, bro, you have a set. You know what I mean? I I've, I've seen interviews of people talk about SNL behind the scenes and how how um um what's the word competitive? Yeah, it is because yeah. everybody has these ideas for sketches. Yeah, and your sketch may not come out you, your sketch yeah. may not be picked but everybody's you know you sometimes you you're putting all these you know you you write like 10 sketches and maybe one may go through right right you know what i'm saying and everybody's everybody's trying to step over each other from what i hear from you know from adam sandler no, and, it's true. and david spade and all the well, i mean i i mean i just know from the same shit like yeah like just like things i've seen and wit and like other documentaries, whatever they like, say, it's wanna, like, yeah, it's a cutthroat. It's a cutthroat. Yeah, very uh, cutthroat. Yeah, yeah, it's cutthroat. I wouldn't want to be in an environment like that. I like my peace. I don't, I don't like being pressured. You know what I mean? Yeah, but then again, I would say, I mean, that's just. I want to be one of those comics a, that come on and and host like one episode. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. I don't want to work. I don't want to be there twenty four seven. You know what I'm saying? I mean. I, I think it was kind of famous is that Shane Gillis. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but it was one comic that um, got hired. And then I guess after he got hired, they did some research on him. And I guess they he did some racist, or they, what they said was a racist Asian joke that he did. And so the day he got hired, of course, the same day or maybe the day after, they told him, you were hired, but I'm sorry, we got to let you go because... You have this shit, and we can't be affiliated with that. So then he was like, "What the fuck, man? Like, <laughs> like I made it all this, you know, all this way, and then you know, y'all just, you know, and y'all just fucked me now." Mm -hmm. But then it almost, it almost like flipped on him because it pulled a one eighty on his career, where his career, then he became known as the guy who didn't make SNL because he made his joke prior that was a long time ago, but it wasn't even that bad of a joke from what I understood, and. But I'm saying it was it was kind of weird how it flipped it, it, at the time. Obviously, at the moment, it probably he was really down about. It. He thought it actually was working against him. I mean, but in the long run, it ended up working for him because it made him famous. Yeah, and then he actually like got more happened, shows. You know, something like that happened to uh, Norm Macdonald as well. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, there was moments where um, SNL would tell him you can't say this, that, and the other, and he would literally host SNL and say this, that. And the other. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. He will yeah. go, go hard, man. But dude, he he was a natural in that shit too. Him, uh, I think another one was Kevin Nealon. That was another one that was pretty funny. Um, I can go. Kevin Nealon was the other guy. There's another. Well, I mean, I'm like I said, man. I mean, I was, 
I was born a while back, but overall, like I, I, I mean, there was another. There's more than a few, but yeah, it's just they all bring their own touch to it, and it's all even to this day. You know, I think it's all pretty fucking funny. But I think even nowadays, I mean, you watch SNL more on excerpts on YouTube more than fucking you watch it actually. Oh yeah, we're gonna watch here on Saturday night. Yeah, start it right at you know whatever time it starts, and yeah, then I watch it all the way through. I watch Saturday Night Live every Wednesday. <laughs> but I mean that. But that's another thing. I think like, I think as of right now, that's like, like I like I was saying earlier. I I was I was when I excuse me when I was saying about how people communicate with each other. Like I feel comedy, music, live music, live comedy, um, podcasts are the last of the last where people are actually physically communicating with each other, with each other, and actually having a conversation. When you really think about people every day who are on their phones, who are so embedded in, like, following or likes or all this other shit, that it kind of gets away from actually just normally communicating with people, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just feel like from when I was growing up to now, like, it's, yeah, it's just a big fucking 180. And then now I can only imagine... Like, like just so much information comes at you. So obviously, you know, that's the whole narrative now. Like a lot of information comes at you. So it's just so hard to like kind of, I mean, of course, if you, like I said, I, that's why I really respect when people go to the comedy show or they go to your show Monday, Wednesday, even Thursday night, you know, because these people are physically going out there to see some comedy and physically hear somebody talk in front of them and make a joke <laughs> whether they bomb or they don't you know so it's like I, I like that's why i like i truly believe in this podcast i truly believe in like comedy live music like it's it's just changing man because it's oh, like yeah. changed it's changed so but, much but, now you know but what's so what's so cool about what you're mentioning is like even though we're, we're all this technology is advancing everybody's on social media you know you can talk to somebody through a phone and everything there's 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 something still traditional about what you describe that will never I don't think it will ever die. Comedy won't ever die because it's that intimacy, man. Yeah. People, you know, people crave that. And I think that's it's in our nature to want to be surrounded by people and be in a group and just have conversation and everything like that. But I mean, I just feel like sometimes people are um you know, they 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 don't want to find like they're they're content going home and jumping on the computer, or they're content going home and jumping on YouTube. I mean, I, I'm I'm a, I'm 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 one for it myself, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm one for it myself. I mean, but then I also I try to I met watch things, you know. I met people like that, man. People who they come to my shows like, man, I don't ever go. I'm usually at home, you know, on my computer doing this. When I came out, I'm like, man, this is fantastic. And just yeah. and just from them enjoying my show, they try to make it more of a regular thing to come out and right. just, you know what I mean? So, But no, that's good to hear. I'm sure it makes you feel good. That's you know, yeah, what I'm saying. But it makes you feel like people, I think people forget, people forget, uh, you know, how important like genuine connection is. Yeah, yeah, when exactly. When there's no technology, there's nothing in front of your face. I, I think people forget that and and when they're reminded by it, it's, it's and not just reminded by it, but the reminder is such a good feeling, right? You know what I mean? That it kind of it kind of stays with them, right? And and and, and it's, it's it's more of a permanent thought. And now they're more willing to go out and be a bit more open and be more talkative. You know what I mean? Yeah, or or even maybe try to open mic themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I mean, do you, uh, um, so with the open mic, I've noticed Mondays and Wednesdays usually get the same comics, right? I mean, you usually get the same around, or you every now and then it does change up quite a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I get the same comics. Yeah. And then uh, some of those comics... Are terrible? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, open mic, you know, and then I forgot, how many minutes is it? Three minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. It's see, three minutes. See, five, five minutes is long, man. Uh, you're tripping. I, I, I think it's long. Man, five, man, I did 20 minutes Sunday. I'm just like, that shit was fast. <laughs> but see, I, I've also heard other comics is like having a loaded gun. You got to have it loaded, like for whatever. So obviously, um, like I said, I, I I can only speak from just doing bombing sessions on my end. But my bombing sessions is like I still try to look at the crowd, kind of feel it, see what they're laughing about, or seeing what else they're kind of hitting on, whatever. And then you know, usually I go up. I mean, 
that's so me, that's me just observing but i just know like like you have to be ready for whatever that curveball might come through oh, yeah. or of of them like like I, I like do you get mad when people walk out in the middle of your set no you don't care no yeah like as long as it's not the last person yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't care yeah yeah you know what I mean? And sometimes when they walk off, I'll tell them, hey, where you going? Yeah, yeah. Usually, I'm just going to get another drink. All right, bet. See you back. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I don't care. You know, you know they're not held hostage. Yeah, you yeah. They won't. But, that, but that room is, it, it gives, I feel it gives like kind of a, I don't know, like I said, to me, it, it, it is definitely like my therapy. Like I said, I can go up there and then I can just literally talk about some shit. Might just brrr, bomb whatever. I recommend actually getting a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have I have that too, but that that I think that's just like the cherry on top when you no, do no, open no, mic. No, no, yeah. yeah, no, no. Comedy is is therapeutic to me as well. You know what I mean? And sometimes I go up there. Sometimes I just have something off my. I'm just just have a problem with. I'll just love to talk about. And of course, I, I'll I'll make jokes about it as I'm talking about it. But I, yeah, I love it, dude. Yeah. But see, also, I mean, I, I feel it's a place where you, you definitely figure out what works, what doesn't, mm -hmm. what hits right away, what doesn't hit. Yeah. But at the same time, it's 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 my mic, so I got more creative freedom. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Because towards the end, I don't think you stood. You, you haven't stayed towards the end, huh? No, I have. I've, I've stayed once or twice. I think when you you usually you usually finish off and you, yeah, yeah, and I do like I probably yeah. do like thirty or up to like an hour. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. These, these fools they stay and they, yeah, just fucking yeah. with people, and you know, those are the moments I'm just talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but that that's definitely. But like I said, it's almost like you don't want to keep the like. It's like uh, like I said, it's like a DJ. You don't want to stop the music, you know. Like you want to keep it. Yeah, but it's not even that. I just I I I love comedy, and and in those hour, like you said, you're afraid of five minutes. That hour made me like, man, thirty minutes ain't shit. <laughs> but I, I feel it's just like having enough like i don't i don't want to be that per, like uh eat, and then just add, then i like i, I gotta I, i'm still far from working on anything the only thing i get what i do get from it is like you said stuff off my chest but then at the same time i look at it now or now i don't have to like, like i said before i used to have to get really drunk going up there now i don't have to do that now i just now i i can be okay you know i can be fine have a drink and just go up and just if it hits it hits if it doesn't it does you know yeah and I've done more bombing than I have hit anything and then of course <laughs> that's where the host that's comes gonna, in that's gonna happen but man. then that's where the host comes in the host comes in and definitely you know picks up the pieces and says you know oh yeah does nah, some but that, that on, happens you know? bro I, I bomb oh man I remember when I first started but the bombs that when I when, even when I think about it they still hurt <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah 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 um, especially in the black rules back then they would give a fuck. <laughs> There was one bomb. I bombed that Ray Cedric's place. I was probably like a little bit over a year in. I did his mic, and they played crickets in the background as I was doing stand up. And that fucked me up because you can't recover. Yeah. From crickets, you gotta. Yeah. You can't just be like, oh, he played crickets, and let me just still do my set. You gotta acknowledge the crickets because comedy is all about self awareness. And it was just, man, it was a shitty ass fucking set. It was hilarious if you weren't me. Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're watching, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You ever had any hecklers like fuck with you? What do you mean like fuck with me? Like I fucked hecklers before. Okay, well that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Heckler women, you know. Yeah. I'm not just going. No, I meant like like, like if they like hey like or just stopping your set or just being. No, a yeah, hundred, yeah, man, hundred yeah. percent. I can't even count how many times people just shout shit out. But then of course you just downplay it and just move on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes you can't. Sometimes bitches still talking. You just either 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 your set ends or somebody comes and kicks them out. Yeah. So what are your uh, goals in this in this whole comedy world scene? Oh man, just to be the best comedian I can possibly be. That's literally my goal, and I feel like with me pursuing that, everything else is just gonna come, which yeah. which it has. Yeah, and then now, because I feel the scenes are changing. Like I said, I I can in, like I, I in can, what way? What do you mean? I, no, I, I meant like the scenes as in like like we were talking about earlier, like. Austin, I feel is unsat. It's like very saturated with just comedians just running there, like you said, all walks alive. Everybody just going there, and then of course, you got. I mean, I, I feel a lot of people come to Houston, um, just as if. I, I feel like say if you're in Northeast, you got New York and Boston. You're not gonna really think of other than New York or Boston, like anywhere else. There might be 
prime comedy or people coming through. Obviously, you're going to have people in between those big major cities trying to go to New York City to do comedy so they can get noticed. So that's what I was saying. I just feel like downtown Houston or Houston in general is just like a big metropolis where you can dive in and get into the comedy scene, but it's very competitive. I don't know. Agree, disagree. I don't know. I don't th- I might be talking, talking about, about Houston. The Houston yeah, scene's competitive. Yeah. I mean, all scenes are competitive. I think Houston has a more hard knock in comparison to Austin. When I went to Austin, everybody just everybody was too supportive of each other. I'm not not to say it's a bad thing, but like, no. No, they are nicer over there. Yeah, but they are just, a little nicer. Yeah, but you ever met someone that was so nice and made you paranoid? Like, but see that. But see, that's what I'm saying. That's what makes Houston different. Because, like you said, Houston's a little rough. It's yeah, a little man, rough. And, and you it's, need you, that you, tough you, exterior, bro. You, yeah. I, I, especially in comedy, you're gonna be dealing with hecklers, people talking shit, and yeah. and you gotta you gotta understand that everybody's gonna like you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and, and you gotta embrace the people. Embrace the people who don't like you as well as the people who do. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. No, but I guess that's that's what I was just, I guess I had to brainstorm for it. But that's what I'm saying about Houston. Houston in general is just like a big metropolis, man. And like, yeah, you probably hit it right on the nail, like saying that it's just like more rough. Like, like, like you said, like Austin, I feel is, yeah, it's just, there's just, they're just more welcoming, more. You know, yeah, yeah. Not to say yeah. it's a bad thing. No, but no, I, no, no, no. Definitely. I just, I just see, you know, it's like just watching the. It's just, it's like watching a kid, who's privileged. You know what I mean? Was was given everything at a young age. Yada yada yada. Didn't have to really work for anything. Versus someone else who's man. Yeah, but I've been in the dirt. My parents were poor. You know what I'm saying? That, that that didn't change my outlook, but I'm just a bit more appreciative. I just and I just know the struggle and just less phased by adversity. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got. You. But then also, I would say um, I've seen a lot of comics too who have done very good here, and they've moved on to other cities. Like like, and they're doing they have they I guess some of them get yeah. agents and they're doing constant shows. Um, I've I've yeah, uh, my uh, good friend Enrique, man, he moved to Austin and now yeah. he's. Um, on the mothership and everything like that, he has a regular place at the mother- mothership. Tony so, Hinch Club's helping him out and everything, which is I'm happy for him. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and I saw his set actually at sunset. Enrique. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, it so happened. We, well, me and my cousin, we went on a Thursday, and of course, mothership was sold out. But then, like, I, I, I like, 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 as in if Austin, for example, mothership's the place to go to, and of course, they're all sold out. That's fine. I like to go to like the other spots, like the other spots where it's like, you know, Vulcan maybe or yeah, Sunset, like little spots that are, you know, where you get kind of like comedians that are starting up or just yeah, comedians yeah. that are not a hundred percent out there. I, you I know? feel you because I, like, I feel that's that's where like you get the true like, um, you get like like real shit. You know what I'm saying? Like versus like and at the same time, there's nothing funnier to me in comedy than watching another comic bomb. <laughs> That's the funniest thing in the world to me, bro. You 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 see me laugh at Oh yeah. <laughs> I just I just love it, bro. I love it. No, yeah, you 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 made some you made a few jokes on mine when I came up. Like you had said that one like when I had cuz I did some uh, set about like I I was bringing up my dad and me living in in my dad's basement and whatever. I'll probably say something about therapy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You, know, you walked up, you're like, you're like, damn, homie, like, go to therapy, bro. Like, shit, talking about your dad and shit. I was like, uh, I was like, okay, cool. I was like, uh, I was like shit, that's, that's and that was the day. I, yeah. I was like, I'll take that one. That was that was, that was, that was a good one. Oh man, but nah, man, but that's but see, that's that's like, because I was raising like just I was raising a dysfunctional type of atmosphere, you know, like a lot of. Not not like dysfunctional where like things were fucked up, fucked up. But I'm just saying in normal like I didn't have I think I, I the way I I would say like things that aren't supposed to be funny are funny to me sometimes. I mean, same like here. like some sometimes like when I watch Sopranos and then you know they just start you know <laughs> like in general like the, you know some dude loses his whole company everything because they're just draining them. The mafia is just draining them and. You know, that's kind of funny because then to me, it's just like 
that dumbass got in trouble because he was gambling and then he got tied in with the mafia. Of course, they're taking on. It's just funny, you know. It's I just, feel you, bro. I'm the same way, bro. Yeah. I was watching Titanic and I laughed when the boat sank. <laughs> <laughs> like, or the part where it cracked or the part where it like. Oh, you know, well, no, when just, it was going down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like I said, I mean, when you think about it, there's more. When, there. when that dude hit the fucking pin, like the little uh, wheel and flip, I was. <laughs> yeah, blip, blip, blip. I and was they like, actually did the sound when you fuck. hear it. When you yeah, it's a bloop. That's just. That's <laughs> Or or no, what I thought was kind of funny was those funny. was the the three uh, the violinists and I guess what was it like? Oh uh, yes, we're gonna be like nigga, get a boat, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> no, well no, the three they were just wanted to stay. They're like fuck it, like yeah, uh, they they, they wanted to play they, music. They, yeah, they were like we're just gonna play music till we die. Fuck it, might as well oh, play. Bro, if play I was it. on that boat, I would have grabbed that shit and smashed it on the goddamn. Bro, would you better? Would you do comedy? You're like ah, fuck it, let me just fuck do some no, comedy. I'm trying to live, nigga. <laughs> fuck comedy. This is not a laughing matter. The boat's going down. <laughs> Hey, but that's what I'm saying. Those guys, they were like, yo, we're going to do music. Like, uh, we're we're going to play down to, to the day we... I would have slapped both of them. To, to the last retarded? breath. <laughs> you white people are always giving up so easily. Like, I'm going <laughs> to find a way out of survive. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Like, 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 and, then, and then even at the end, the end, there was room there, man. There was something he could have did. He, he, they, she she could have floated over somewhere. Maybe got another piece of wood. Maybe brought it over, threw his body on there. But then, you know, of course, they, they dip at the very end where then she he ends up passing out. Oh, yeah. And then ends up, and motherfucker just dies. Obviously, hypothermia, you know? Um, yeah, right. Yeah, that, it was enough room in there for the buffalo. And then, uh, then you know, even nowadays, I mean, that shit wouldn't happen, man. That that would be like a poor-ass motherfucker like him trying to hook up with her. Like, that shit wouldn't have gone down. Not, not in real life. But were, obviously, the movie. That's the why movie. she killed him. <laughs> my family can I know about you but <laughs> and then that, yeah cause I mean this was just a one it, it, you know, that was, was just a, a one cause you know that was just a one night I bet you like this was just a fling nigga I, I ain't finna take you back <laughs> what we talk? I'm gonna go back to England <laughs> yeah and then like I said the yeah but yeah, yeah there, there, there's that movie uh, Forrest Gump that, that's just pretty wouldn't funny. it be funny wouldn't it be funny if Jack did survive he did survive, but it turns out like they just not compatible. <laughs> <laughs> and that could happen too. Yeah, they just yeah, like they they just like they you know, they start dating for like a month. They're like, I don't even like you. <laughs> I mean, in reality, he, he hit that shit within what, three days, two days, mm -hmm. if that. I mean, it was like in the movie, like I guess the first night, second night, mm -hmm. she tried to jump, he saved her, and then the next two nights, yeah. So that boy has some game, you know, coming from fucking just drawing pictures and shit. And obviously they had Leonardo. You exactly. Know, play that if you role. look, out, if you look like Leonardo, come on. <laughs> Actually, I mean, he's still fucking Le teenagers. He is. Uh, well, I mean, they're they're. I guess they're, they're they're of age. They're not teenagers, but you know. Uh, Paul Walker had that shit too. Apparently, they hated on him too. People, a lot of people didn't know about that shit. Fast either. and Furious, Paul Walker. Yeah, but I mean. I mean, like, I don't, I don't care. Like, they're eighteen and up. They're legal. The fuck. Well, Elvis, you know, Elvis had fucking Elvis had, Elvis had like, and they kept uh, that shit under wraps. Yeah, because they had. She was like sixteen. But then R. Kelly, that's illegal. He's peeing on people. Well, yeah, but that's like, he was. <laughs> but I mean, but he's uh, fucking. Yeah, he bro, he fucked a Leo when she was underage. That's what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, like, it just seems like I'm not saying it's right for either R. Kelly or Elvis. But I'm just saying Elvis did date. Yeah, pursue the press. But at least Leonardo DiCaprio has, has and her. Her parents knew. Her parents were actually military. Of course, of course yeah. they knew. They're like, nigga, El, bro, you better get that money. <laughs> <laughs> you better suck that nigga. Of course they knew. Ain't like, I ain't saying shit. <laughs> bro, some of them R. Kelly victims knew too. Bro, oh yeah, parents, yeah, 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 yeah. They were yeah. like, yo, nigga, I believe. Yeah. Like, have you seen Space Jam? Like, yeah, yeah, you better get on that. Yeah, they knew that shit too. And then a lot of those parents were like, like setting them up, grooming them for that shit. Yeah, that's fucking dude. weird, man. There's some weird shit out there, man. Mm -hmm. Weird, dude. And then, but but see, that's where I feel like going back to what we were saying. Like comedy brings out that, like like random fucking situations or just the most fucked up shit you see, which also sometimes is just fucking funny because I think the most un thing, like the most uncommon thing that you see, is usually kind of funny. I think. I mean, I worked in the I worked in the ER. I'm not saying everything was funny in there, but there were some overacting people that would go in there and overact on some shit that really wasn't that serious. And yeah, 
And then you see so much of it, you just can compare the comparison. So that's that's the that's the what I bring to it. You know, as I'm saying, like, yeah, come on. I, I just think society, the way society, the way we live in it, it uh, it require it requires us. The everyday living in society requires us to be a little bit um, just. We can't be too honest. You can't be too honest in society. You know what I mean? You can't just walk down the street and see a fat girl and be like, God damn, bitch, you need to lose some fucking weight. You can't do that. You know what I mean? It's, just, it's not society. So I think comedy has a way of like, yeah, this bitch is fat and she probably needs to lose weight. Uh. But comedy has a way of like, okay, I'm on stage. I can point it out. Even though it's mean, it still has the realm of comedy in it. So it's okay. You know what yeah. I mean? But then some people like being fat. Some people are cool with being fat. No, they don't like being fat. They're just lazy. I don't know. I haven't met, met anybody yeah. like, I love being fat. Nah, I just... Nah, but then... I never met anybody. No, no, no. no I'm also basing on, like, you got some women that are just... Lazy? Not, no, well, you, but, <laughs> but you got some women that kind of works for them, you know? Huh? And you got some women that doesn't, you know? And some women that just... All I'm saying, like in general, is some of the not, Lizzo oh, types. I'm not. <laughs> oh, that's a whole other conversation. Oh, there. where is it? Okay, I thought you were talking. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Lizzo. Oh, uh, all right, cool. The Lizzo bitch. Well, I'm saying like somebody. I mean, that fool. Appara- Fat positivity. Apparently, bro. apparently, Lizzo was dating some NFL player. I don't know how true that is. Shit is, but obviously, it was. Uh, my, excuse me. My whole point is, there's interest in there with women like that. So with interest in with women like that, like they just like fuck it. I guess yeah, I'm not, man. I thought I'm not, I guess I'm just gonna be lazy, or I guess I'm just yeah, not even gonna do. Because they're all talking else. about bo- you know body positivity. I thought body positivity was being healthy, not just accepting you for the fucking slump that you are. You know what I mean? I think that's shallow. <sighs> yeah, body but, but see, I guess even then we have to be careful with that shit. No. Be careful saying that shit. I mean, what, that's fat? almost that's almost like saying, "Yeah, we can't call people fat." Oh boy, I call people fat all the fucking time. <laughs> oh. hey, go talk to Nate Ortiz. I bring him all the time. Give it up for the fattest comic in Houston, <laughs> Nate Ortiz. He hates me. <laughs> He's not even the fattest comic in Houston. Only say because he doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but see, but see, then again, it's like you know him on that level, though. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. What I yeah. Said. You know him that level, but like obviously, if you just. First met him, you're like, oh hey, uh, we have uh, Mr. Ortiz coming up. And, I mean, but I've, I mean, I've, I've, you know, but I've I mean, seen I've, audience members. I'm just like, I, I sometimes <laughs> I'm just like, you know what, this is mean, but I'm gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. Just to get, <laughs> sometimes I don't even do it just to get a laugh. It's it's on my mind, so I gotta say it to get out of my system, <laughs> just so I can move on. Sometimes I be looking like, God damn, are you fat as hell? Just to, just to get out of my chest. <laughs> but see, like I said, some people are just. Like I, I feel some people are just like that, you know. Um What fat? No, all right, let me go. Let me keep, I'm sorry. No more fat shit. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, they're just fat, but I'm saying they've accepted that them I'm, I'm just fucking fat. Like it's just the way it is. No, I'm uh I think I think there's a, are you accepting or are you giving up? Yeah, that's another yeah, but yeah. True. Anybody can lose weight. I you know, and people want to come up with all these excuses of uh well, I'm, I got, I got, I got this type of disease, or like my my body doesn't work. Like I've heard so many excuses. I'm like, no, <laughs> nigga, no, nigga, you just don't want to walk. You just yeah. don't want to go to the gym and run. See, but we're two skinny guys, so like us two skinny guys, that's almost like us being like, is that us like being racist or some shit? No, <laughs> no, because we're two Dude, skinny. Think, guys. We're like, bro, oh, you tell it, like bro. people are fat. Bro, no, if fat. I can, if I can go for a jog. <laughs> <laughs> and become white, I would totally be down for that shit. No. Ain't or, racist or, at all. Or, or, or it's like... Uh, what did Bill Burr say? I didn't put that food in your mouth. You did. <laughs> but it's almost like... Uh, like, I, I fuck around with... with uh, like, I don't know who I said this to, but I was just like... I go, you don't like Thai food or you don't like Chinese food? I don't like Thai food. I don't like Chinese food. Like, Yo, man, that's kind of racist. You don't like Thai food, Chinese food, but... Yeah, you want to correct me on my pronouns and all that bullshit, you know? Like, isn't that kind like of like somebody a called you dope? racist because you didn't like Thai or Chinese? No, they no, I was they were calling me almost not open minded because I didn't I didn't have an open mind about using pronouns, certain pronouns. So I said, well, you don't like Chinese food or you don't like Thai food, so you're racist for not liking Thai food. Be open minded, just like you're saying I'm not fucking open minded. 
I'm saying you're not open minded because I think that's a silly rebuttal to that argument. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fair. You don't though. like to use pronouns. Well, you don't like Chinese food. Like, okay, that's your argument. <laughs> well, it's kind of f- childish, but uh, I mean, yeah, at the no, same no. time, I, I mean, I'm just, down for being childish. But no, I'm just I know, saying. but I just can't. I just that's just not something I would. I would just be like, if I heard that, like amongst me, between my friends, I'd be like, really, they, like, like I see your point, but this is the best. <laughs> no, they're, like, no, they're they're like there's other situation too where this dude goes, hey man, where are you from? I go, I'm from this is in the navy. I'm from Texas. He's like, you're from Texas, man. He goes, oh man, I thought you're from L.A. or something because I don't like the way the guys talk in L.A., man, especially the Mexican guys in L.A. I was like, yo, bro, that's a totally different area from where I'm from, bro. Like like L.A. South L.A. I'm curious, like, how do Mexicans in L.A. talk? Uh, well, L.A. Spanish speaking is a lot different from Texas. Really, Spanish speaking is okay. totally different. But but uh, then again, I'm not the right Mexican to even be saying some shit like that. I'm I'm a like I said that whole shit. That's a whole other conversation within itself too. But my whole point: this guy was calling out these people from California that were typically Mexican, and he was uh, I believe Venezuelan. He was from South America. I would say that. I'll say that. I'll just nip it in the butt. But he was saying he didn't like the way they talked. And I go, that's kind of fucked up. And he goes, how? I go, you're Hispanic too, but you're from south of Texas. I mean, you're from South America. And now you're saying, like, how can you as a Hispanic tell about another Hispanic that you don't like the way they talk because from where they're from, but then you're from outside of the country. You're not even American yourself. Like, that's like kind of like, that's like being... Like that's almost like saying I don't like Mexicans that are too dark because I like Mexicans that are light. You know, it's like that, and that's just that's I just, don't like dark. <laughs> 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 I'm dark or, or or you know I just I oh yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't like dark ass black guys. That's pretty fucked up. You know I like, don't like dark ass. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> but yeah what's the point <laughs> but see, that's what i'm saying like i i, I was trying to call him out because i was like yo man like how are you gonna call them out like you're like motherfucker like you you're 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 dark as hell motherfucker you're dark as you know from south america like 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 i like that just that, that's working against us we're supposed to stick together you mm-hmm. know <laughs> we gotta stick together, dog. This, black, you know? this was Mexican like, Mexican crime. Makes yeah, me yeah, man. Like, you, well, I'm not Mexican. I, I'm I'm from South America. Well, whatever, dog. You're here. You're here in the Navy. That's you're, what I tell everybody. It's like, bro. I had this dude come to me. I'm not African American. I'm not black. I'm Jamaican. I'm like, you're still a nigga, bro. What the fuck you talking about? You the same? The police gonna come over. And be like, let me hear your action just to make sure I give you the right bullets. <laughs> and and then. I mean, you you just, I don't know. It's just like, I think nowadays you have to be very, but that's what I like about comedy because even the open mics, you know, you might say some fucked up shit, but like, oh, well, like you you say, it. I feel you just say it and see what, you know, of course, go, yeah, go, man, go I with support, it. Like I said, I support freedom of speech. I I'm honest. I will tell you, hey man, I don't like that joke. I don't think you should say it. But you can say where the fuck you want on stage. I'll, I'm, but you know, I'm not gonna not. I'm not gonna tell anybody. Don't. I don't care how racist it is. Yeah. Or anything, bro. It was this white dude who came up to me. I swear to God, he was at the secret group, and he was in like um. um I met him at imp- I did, I used to do improv before comedy. Yeah. And I met him doing improv. So you know, we kind of had that familiarity when he saw me. And he was like, "Yeah, you do comedy, man. I've been seeing you. Yeah, yeah. I'm finna go go up there. All right, cool, man. Like, you got some jokes you finna do? Yeah, bro. I got this joke about these niggas. I'm like. Okay, like, 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 I thought he, I thought he was joking. I thought he was joking. He said, he said, nigga and everything, and I was like, all right, good luck, see how it goes. And I shit you not, he went on stage, bro. He went on stage. And he was like, man, as a kid, as a kid, um, people used to call me cracker. You know what I'm saying? White people used to call me cracker. Uh, black kids used to call me cracker. And I'm like, man, okay, then nigger. How do you? I'm like, yo. <laughs> Whoa, whoa! Did you have to go up there and be like, no, hey, 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 "I wasn't, I wasn't hosting." Uh, Je- you know Jesse, the big white buff dude who works, he's the bartender there. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was hosting, and he like kicked him out the second he said, "Nigga, <laughs> nope, you're done, you're done." 
Oh my God. And and what was so funny about that was everybody's reaction. I was like the only one dead. <laughs> like, because you got all these white people like, ooh, and I'm over here like, ah, he said, <laughs> it was just like, yo, this dude is bugging. <laughs> Did you ever see him after that? I haven't seen him. Uh, I haven't seen him after that. <laughs> but this motherfucker was like 65 years old. And he was, and then he he tried to explain to me, growing up, man, we could say those things. I'm like, no, you, no, you couldn't. <laughs> no. But see, that's even fucked up. Like, like you, like you're saying, like uh, a guy that age saying like we could say shit like that. It's like, bro, it wasn't right then. Yeah, either. exactly. <laughs> like, no, you couldn't. <laughs> it wasn't right then. Yeah. So what makes it right now? Like, huh? Like, but. I don't know, man. That's the thing with like a lot of people in those ages, man. They just think like, I don't know. I also think like they just, I don't know. There's just another but, world sometimes. But, but the 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 cool thing about it was, yeah, he got kicked out and everything. But like, he he he. I'm I'm being totally honest. He didn't seem racist. Yeah. He seemed ignorant. Which, yeah. Which is why I wasn't really mad. Right. I talked right. to I talked to this dude before. He just seemed like someone who was just out of touch. On what times are now, and he, he never like a mean dude. You know what I'm saying? He, he wasn't a mean guy. He was just an old white ignorant motherfucker that's having to say the end. So I don't, I don't, I don't feel any animosity towards that. I at mean, all. it was funny even to the point where he said they used to call me Cracker. Yeah. So I decided. To call- yeah, I was like, yo, my man. <laughs> it's almost like he could have stopped it right there. He could have stopped it right there. Yeah, he just kept. I going. didn't say it. <laughs> he could have left the joke there. He's like, I was about to say it, but I could have said it. Yeah, man. But he, did, but he didn't. He, he didn't seem like a racist to me at all. He just seemed like he was just ignorant, <laughs> just super <laughs> ignorant. Like, why can't I say like uh, just out of touch? Um. So my dad is. Yeah, my dad is up there in age, and I would say yeah, a lot of a lot of the that's what I'm like. I try to base a lot of the stuff that I've experienced through him and watched him. I mean, I've seen my dad talked to um back in the day we used to go into asian restaurants and he would get try to get jobs as welding some of their equipment Mm -hmm. he would talk to them the way that he would that the way they would talk to him okay obviously we go into a chinese restaurant or vietnamese restaurant or something that'd be hilarious hello they wouldn't they wouldn't really speak good english you know they would just speak like and and he'll he'll start speaking terrible i give you good price he goes uh i need uh i need this fixed right here cut uh city tells me i need a fix now he go my dad would go i fix good 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 fix good fix for you i good i give good price for you good price and then i would tell my i was like dad like why do you talk to him like that like what do you mean like what but my dad wouldn't even catch it that he was talking to him the way the same way they were nah, talking it's, to him it's, it, i think it's that whole winning wrong <laughs> you know what i mean i get but it But i think it's the same thing like you're saying like he, you're not he's not trying to be ignorant man. he's just like like yo like you know that's how. I mean, I'm just gonna refrain, like yeah. go back this way, same way. Like, you give me good price, I give you good price. I give you good price. You know, mm. one five zero, one five zero. He's like one five zero, one five zero five. Okay. Ah, no, 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 too much. He goes, oh, too much. If it's too much, I, I, I don't do job. I don't do job. And then I'm like, Dad, oh my God, my dad's like diving in on this, like, That's like talking. Funny. Yeah, but at the time, I like to know. see him in the black neighborhood. What's up, cuz? Hey, yeah, like, <laughs> oh, my dad would correct that shit too, because some some black guys would come up to him and be like, "What's up, Mexican?" He goes, "I'm not a Mexican. I'm a Mexican." <laughs> and oh no, then he will flip and say he's a Mexican American who go on that spill, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, but yeah, so I try to like a lot of the things that I've seen my dad do, man. It's kind of funny. It's like I always feel my dad's kind of like John Witherspoon, but the Mexican John Witherspoon. That's funny. Yeah, he's the Mexican John Witherspoon. Like you know, <laughs> he'll he'll uh, he'll even come back and arrest him. But thirty forty five minutes. <laughs> or 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 like another joke would be like uh, you know, being that old and being so tight with money that you're gonna save money by just washing your underwear once a week. That's just... disgusting. <laughs> what? I'm not saying he did it. I'm not saying he did it. Oh, I'm just God. saying like to be, that. That's the, the the joke I'm trying he to. He probably come gave on. your mom like a whole bunch of fucking STDs <laughs> and shit. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I got a urinary tract. They're man. they're uh they're high school and uh, high school sweethearts. Mm. They've been married for. They're in their late seventies, man. So. Oh man, and been married since high school. Yeah. Well, after a little bit after well, my after my dad came back from Vietnam. 
Holy shit. Yeah, my dad, like, he was, like, in this whole, like, it was almost like, like, that's what I said. It's almost like a, like a story, a movie you would watch, you know, in the 60s. You got 60s music, got the cars, you know, civil rights, everything happening, Vietnam, come back, you know, marry my high school sweetheart. It was like a damn movie in a way. I, I always think, like, sometimes, like, back in the day, they, like, America was kind of like role played as like a movie, you know, American dream, house, kids, barbecue. And you realize that dream is a nightmare. <laughs> In a way, yeah, for some, for some, yeah, or just the chase for it. Just like, that's what I was saying. Like, I, that's what I was saying earlier. Like, things I felt that I see as funny now is more of me just being conditioned on things that I was conditioned with when I was younger that weren't supposed to be funny, but just. You know, seeing fights every day in my neighborhood, seeing, I don't know, seeing a body laying on the ground, you know, driving. I don't know. It's just, like I said, just some fucked up shit and all. But, and then lower, later on, you know, you just get older and you're like, yo, that wasn't normal that we saw that shit. Yeah. Or that wasn't too normal that you would see this or that or whatever, you know? Uh -huh. But then again, you've become conditioned and then now you just kind of have to gradually make a sense of humor out of things or you know make humor out of things just to make it kind of to kind of just go go with the motions i guess you know mm -hmm. but yeah man so um i guess we got oh yeah we got an hour in so not too bad i didn't know uh how long we else we should go i mean we've been going for a minute i think i got about like 10 minutes left in me no i feel you man shit we can we can go ahead and nip it in the butt you know for sure, for sure, for sure. But yeah, man, definitely. I'm glad you came. So what do you think of the studio? So Oh man, it's shit. I'm just playing. <laughs> no, it's, it's dope. I enjoyed it, man. Yeah, I man. But stuff. but uh the idea would be shit, maybe we could get Joe and you back here. Oh, that'd be dope. Me and Joe, me and Joe Chopper. Yeah, and think about it, I would love it because I haven't talked to Joe in a long time. No, I can line that up. So I'll be that'd be dope. Be I could I could definitely line that up. Um and then you don't have to pick me up. I'll just ride with Joe. <laughs> no, that's true. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's still living in Montrose, though. Uh, he 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 does not live in Montrose anymore. He's living somewhere else, but it's still close. He's still still in the proximity. Right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and go live real quick, just to show him out there. And then, uh, but nah, uh, I'm glad you came. Glad you came to visit Marlo. I'm glad I got to show you the my place of recording. Nah, man, this was dope, man. This is cool. It was a nice vibe. I pre I appreciate you for having me, man. No, nah, definitely, man. Um, like I said, I I next time I'm coming back, bro, I'm bringing bitches. I'm bringing fucking crack. no, no, <laughs> no, no. I mean, like I said, <laughs> no, I mean, but the, the 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 whole idea, like my my other little dream would be, um, mix mix mag has this where they have a studio and they bring different DJ. So instead of comedy. I mean, I'm sorry, instead of DJs, it would be comedy. I mean, I guess that's the same thing as a podcast already. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> 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 but I just, what I liked about the Mix Max Studios, they would bring in different DJs. And then, of course, it's not like a club area, but like they'll bring in their friends, their little entourage, mm. and then they get to party. And then, of course, mm. it's broadcasted live. So it's broadcasted live. And there's just, I mean, it's what's been going on already right now. But sure. like I said, the whole other idea would be also broadcasting a show live too. But then I guess I'm not there on followers, man. I'm getting there. How many followers like I you got? Mm, <laughs> 69. You got 69? That's it. On Instagram or just on your podcast? No, on podcast. No, it's on YouTube. Uh -huh. Yeah, on, on Instagram, I'm only at 800, man. Well, for you 69 individuals out there, you better tell your goddamn friends. Yeah, log in, subscribe, click. It's in the process of getting put on other podcasts websites so that's another thing i'm like i said i've gotten to this point man this is like i've the where i've gotten right now with this podcast is oh, got yeah we're, like at this point this is before 2020 man so this has all been learning three years doesn't even get down to the point of learning the programs learning how to set up these mics and, learning and, how and, everything and, and, man if anything bro like you know if this podcast don't work you already got to set up for a nice only fan Oh yeah, well I could just I can really roll that at right in here too, you know, and start just making a studio out of the OnlyFans. That's why I said Amazon should do like a 
a package that's deal, man. That's hilarious. Like they I should think do. That's, you should turn that into a bit. That's fucking. Funny. Yeah, like I said, but I, I, I was like, I, like that's why there's so many OnlyFans because they, they can buy all this shit for like under 120 bucks, <laughs> and then the next Get thing the you only know, OnlyFans package with a free deal. Fuck yeah. <laughs> And then, you know, they have the plus minus on there. Like, yeah, you can get it all combined, yeah, yeah. and it costs this much. Bam, right there, you know? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, man, definitely, man. I, w- I want to have you back. So, uh, definitely, we'll have you back again soon enough. And uh, thank you, man, for coming. I, appreciate I guess you, man. that'll be it. Word. Ooh.